we finished with variables, let's move to our next major topic, which will be collections. We'd like to divide collections into two major sections, each exploring a different component of lists and arrays. The first section, which is going to be this one, we'll take a look at first what are lists and arrays and how do we use them in Kotlin. And we're going to take a look at two very specific types of lists, non-mutable lists and arrays. So not array lists, just arrays. In the next section, we can take a look at some slightly more advanced types that carry with them a lot of extra functionality. So let's head on over to main activity now, as you can see, kind of cleared it out, and I've moved everything from the previous section to variables texts. So first, what are lists and arrays, and how do we use them in Kotlin? Well, lists and arrays are different ways of storing multiple values in a single location and are generally stuck or restricted to one specific type. So this means that we could have a list of integers or a list of strings or a list of booleans, but generally we don't mix the types, so we don't have a mixed list of booleans and strings and floats or something. That being said, otherwise we can treat lists and arrays as just being a way to store multiple values in a single location so that we can move them around as one big piece and access different uh, components or different properties of that list. Now, like I said, we're going to be taking a look at non-mutable lists. Okay, and we'll take a look at arrays. And these are two slightly different list types that have very slightly different functionalities. This one has a little bit more. And these are essentially lists of values that cannot change. So this means that once we assign certain values to a list, we cannot go into that list and change individual values. At least with non-mutable lists, arrays are a little bit different. So let's take a look at how we would set up a list first, and then we'll take a look at an array. So a list would be set up as a val or a variable, depending on whether we want to be able to change it. Okay, we'll have the name, and typically speaking, we assign it like this. We'll have the type or a non-mutable list in this case, so it's just a list of. Okay, and then we have in angular brackets beside it, the type, so integer, string, etc. And then we have the values in here, so val1, val2, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is a typical non-mutable list setup. So let's actually launch right into an example. Maybe let's consider some scenario where we would not need to change values, maybe days of the week. So we could create a val that is a name of something like days of, actually let's call this weekdays in particular, weekdays. And this is going to be a list of, okay, note already there are tons of different kinds of lists to choose from. We want a list of in the angular brackets beside it, we'll put the type. This is just going to be a list of strings. Okay, and then we'll fill in some values. So we'll have one, two, uh, three, four, five. Oh, and shouldn't put that in quotes. So let's just consider the uh, weekdays. So we'll have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Okay. So at this point, I now have my list set up and I can access the entire list by calling on weekdays or I can access individual elements by calling on a get operation. So I could say, for example, weekdays dot get. Okay. And then I could enter the index. So this is index zero, one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. So let's say I want to the first element, second element, third, fourth, and so on and so forth. Okay. Fifth. Alternatively, I can call on weekdays and in the square brackets beside it, again, put the index. So let's say four, this will get me my last element again. Now there are a variety of other operations I can perform on this list. So if I call upon my list name dot, you can see all of these operations, but keep in mind, all of these are just retrieval operations. So these are just retrieving values or information about the list. We can get the index of some particular element. So we enter some element returns at the index of that. We can get, for example, the last element, the last index. We can return the entire list to a string. We can get the size of the list, return whether or not it contains a certain element and so on and so forth. Lots of different operations to choose from. However, there is no set operation, we cannot take a specific index, or let's say three, and change it to something else that's not allowed with this kind of a list. And we can't add or remove elements to and from this list as well. That's why it's called a non-mutable list. We could, however, change the entire list to contain a different value. So we could say something like weekdays equals a new list off, and then perhaps only one element, which is a blank string. That's actually perfectly fine. The main idea of this list type is that we cannot change individual elements off the list and we can't add or remove elements. Now, this is where our array comes in handy. So this is a little bit better than weekdays. It's just a step up, meaning that we can change individual values, but again, we cannot change the size. So we cannot still add or remove elements from it. So 
let's consider perhaps if we have some kind of a true or false test which needs an answer key. So maybe five questions, okay? So five answers. Let's call this uh, true or false answer key, okay? And this is just going to be not a list off this time, but it's going to be an array off, okay? Again, even within this, there are specific arrays uh, denoted to each different type. We're not going to bother with those, although where applicable, I would recommend you use these instead of just a general array list or array off, but we're just going to explore this for now, okay? And then we can put our elements here. So let's say false, uh, true, true, false, false, okay? Something like that. What I can do is pull all of these same operations on this, but I can also change a value. So let's say we realize that this should actually be false as well. We're just going to say true or false answer key dot set, okay? And we're going to set the current index, which is index two. And then we're going to set a new value, which in this case is just going to be false. Alternatively, we can do pretty much exactly the same thing, but with this kind of a syntax. So we could say true or false answer, oops, true or false answer key at the index of two is equal to false and it has exactly the same effect as above. But however, once again, cannot add or remove elements from it, so we cannot add anything, we cannot remove anything, and so on and so forth. So that's the big difference between mutable and non-mutable lists. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this section. I just wanted to show you our two non-mutable lists that we commonly use. Again, you can change the entire list, but generally speaking, you cannot add or remove elements from it. And with our basic non-mutable lists rather than arrays, we cannot um, even change the elements within a list. So this is just for retrieval purposes. This has a little bit extra functionality. So what I would recommend you do, because there are so many other functions that can be called on these lists and arrays, is I would recommend you check the two out. So just type your name, uh, true, or false, uh, uh, true or false answer key, or the weekdays list, dot, and then take a look at a bunch of these different operations that you can perform. And once you're happy with that and ready to move on to mutable lists, let's move on to the next section where we'll be exploring mutable list off, and we'll be exploring array list off.